Hi guys and welcome to HTML5 Quintus Basics. My name is Pablo Farias Navarro, I'm the founder of Zamba, and I'm also an active user and contributor of the Quintus open source project. Now about Quintus. Quintus is a JavaScript game development library created by Pascal Rettich, which allows you to create lightweight, modular and JavaScript friendly games. So this awesome project is not a porting of an external game framework, but it's really conceived within JavaScript, making the best of their language. Some of the core concepts. Quintus has a single inheritance class system, which allows you to create classes and subclasses, and it also has a component system, so that you can um, attach components to different objects. It comes with its own event system as well, which is how most um, JavaScript programming takes place nowadays. Your development environment, what you need is a web browser and you need to be able to, uh, you need to be familiar with the development tools of your web browser. Um, it can be Chrome or Firefox with a Firebug installed. There are other options too. You need a code editor. What I'm using for these projects is um, Sublime Text, but feel free to use whichever code editor you prefer. You will need a web server installed. It can be a local web server on your machine or it can be an external web server, a remote server. Um, if you want to install a local web server, if you're using Windows, you need to download, you, you can download WAMP, that will give you Apache. If you're on the Mac, you can download MAMP. And on Linux, um, Apache might already be installed or you, you can easily install it. Um, you'll find the, the way to do it, it's very simple. What you need to know to create games with Quintus in terms of programming is some um, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. You need to be familiar with how the web works. Having some uh, basics on object-oriented programming is highly recommended, but you don't really need that uh, much uh, depth. As long as you understand what a class and a subclass is, you can figure out the rest um, while you make your games and look at the source code of the framework and look at the examples, of course. Um, yeah, you also need to be able to install a web server and know how to access files from your web browser using this web server. The installation instructions for the framework, you can go to the GitHub page and you can either download the zip file that contains all of the code or if you're familiar with Git, you can just clone the repository on your computer. If you download the zip file and unzip it or if you clone the repository, you're going to encounter um, the following files and folders. In the, in the folder called lib, you'll find the actual library. Those are all the modules that you will, um, that you, that come with the, with the library. There are also cutting edge modules which are not really polished, but you can also check them out, although be aware that they might be buggy. They're located in the extra folder. And exam the examples folder comes with a really a lot of examples uh, that showcase different uh, pieces of functionality of the framework. When you're um, going on production, you might want to use the minified version. And you can also include the Quintus All version uh, from the CDN uh, like this. When you're, when you're doing development, it's, uh, it's better to work with a non-minified version, but when you're going live, it's best to minify your files and have it as lightweight as possible. The workflow when creating a game, this is a very rough way of putting it, um, but basically what you do is you load your modules, which are Quintus um, default modules and also the ones that you might have created. Then you set up Quintus, where you set up some uh, game level aspects such as the resolution or whether the screen is going to be maximized or not uh, to occupy all the all the screen area. Um, you carry out your asset loading and once the assets are loaded you start your game. So I was saying that there's a class system. Um, it all comes from a class, an object called q.class and then by using extend you can create subclasses at the corresponding methods. The init method is the constructor. It'll be called every time a new instance of this class is created. Components. Um, I'm adding a component here to a class called player, which extends from sprite. That represents the, the images that you put on the screen. And by using add, you can add different components to your, um, to your object. And you can also check whether those components exist or not. 
events works in a work in a similar way uh, as usually does in JavaScript, both a native JavaScript and a jQuery and such, where you listen for an event and you have a callback method that's um, that's called when the event is triggered. When you set up the framework, you include the modules that um, that you want to use in your game. Those should have been previously included on your on the head of your HTML document. And setup has a whole bunch of options which you, you can find on the guide. Um, you usually set development to true to avoid um, browser caching during your development process. Quintus preloads assets, as I was saying, and once all assets are loaded, that's when your game really begins. Um, stages and scenes are very important um, co uh, concept here. Stage is what's being shown on the screen. Think of a theater stage. That's what people are seeing. And now scenes are instructions on what's going to be put in that stage. So a scene will define which sprites will go, what their locations will be, uh, what the background will be. It's very similar to a theater. The only difference is that you can have many stages at the same time. So think of a 3D theater where you have stages where you have many stages in front of you so you can have some stages that are in front of other stages and they usually don't interact with each other there's a 2d module that allows you to make um, two-dimensional games there's a, a camera that can follow the player around the level there's some basic 2d physics support and support for tile-based games some other things that are included, there's an input method, there's animations, there's sounds. There's also support for TMX files, which are exported from um, the game editor called Tiled. And what happens if you get stuck? How can you learn uh, more? Where can you find the answers? Um, Quintus cannot be treated as a black box, like, like some people do with, for example, jQuery, where they just uh, Google search for all the, for all the answers. Um, in Quintus, you really need to look at the source code the first time that you do. You might not understand much, but as you progress on your game, you'll become familiar with it and you'll learn to have it open at all times and really go to it right away as a first place to uh, find information. There's an online API documentation and a guide. The, the API really comes, it's generated from the code, so everything that's in the API is on the code, and the page where you'll find all of this is HTML5Quintus.com, which is the home page of the framework. There's a silly example in here for platformer game. You can take a look at the code as well. And if you go to Docs, there's the uh, the guide that I was mentioning. That's a really a must read if you're making if you want to make games with Quintus. You really need to have at least one read at this whole thing. And then there's the documentation uh, of the API, which, as I mentioned, is, is really generated from the code. So the things that are here are also on the code. Uh, but you might find this easier to, to browse. That's really up to you. Um, there's also uh, tutorials. You can find the links of the, the latest tutorials um, in here. I've created some of them. They're on my site, gamedeacademy.org. Um, if you go to Tutorials and then you find Quintus, there you'll find my Quintus tutorials and well if you visit my site it won't hurt if you um, click like and follow as that always helps and encourages me to keep on uh, creating content so um, the other place is the Google Plus community but you really need to ask there only if you've gone through the source code if you've looked in the API if you've looked in the guide if you had read the tutorials at one point so that um, so that you know that the answer is not there because People at the Google Plus community, they're very friendly. Nobody's getting paid here. Um, but it's best if you can only ask things that are really worth, uh, that, that give value to other people as well. So if you ask something that's that's on the first page of the tutorial, of the documentation, um, it's best if you don't. Um, so that, um, yeah, so that that's pretty much it, what happens if you get stuck. So um, it, this is an open source framework. And you can always contribute if you if there's things that you would like to add to framework supports for something else. You can create an extra module, and the steps to do so you need to be familiar with Git and GitHub. You need to be able to to clone the repository, work on the features, maybe create your own branch, and then you can do a pull request that will uh, that will let us the the the, the directive committee of the framework uh, evaluate if that will go into the framework or not. Um, I suggest that um, 
that you ask uh, maybe before doing the pull request just just to be sure that nobody else is working on the same thing um, you can just do a pull request and if it's a cool feature and and, and it works um, it'll, it'll go through you know but uh, uh, if you if you get, if you really want to contribute, just get in touch with us with um, with uh, anyone from the team, and and we can talk and see how you can contribute. Um, if you add stuff, although make sure that you test it really really well, uh, so that doesn't break existing um, APIs or existing code, and you don't um, make other people get a uh, big headaches because of that update. Um, so we also at Zamba are really committed to give you um, training, some, some for free and some for very affordable prices. Um, we have courses on how to program an HTML5, on how to make uh, apps, mobile apps, or cross-platform apps, how to publish them onto different platforms, the Android, the iOS, uh, Blackberry, and we're always, always adding new things. And we also have a set of HTML5 game development courses. So there's one on the Lime.js framework, which is a really awesome game framework that you can have a play with as well. Um, we have one that teaches you how to uh, work with the canvas directly. That's create a HTML5 game from scratch. Um, so that really goes to the bone when it comes to the canvas. Uh, it's not using any of the frameworks. And we also have stuff on web development. Um, and uh, libraries like jQuery. So yeah, thanks for listening uh, and feel free to take a look at any of these things.